Okay, so July, not only in the temperature, but in real estate is really heating up. And so we're gonna go over what are the trends that we're looking for? What are the mortgage rate trends that we're looking for? What should we expect, say, over the next 60 days? Now, I know we normally talk about, hey, the next 90 days, the next six months, uh, the next 12 months, but I think that uh, looking at the next 60 days is gonna be super important as we start talking about, well, our normal real estate market. So with that, make sure you subscribe, uh, go ahead and ring the little bell so that you're alerted when our updates come uh, live. Uh, with that, hey, it's free. So make sure you share this information. So if you know that, well, somebody's looking at buying and selling a home, they could use real-time information. And that's what you get. Uh, you know, we're not talking about what, what happened last quarter. We're talking about real time right now so you can make the best business decision. Hey, look, there's no strings attached. That's the best part. So do us a favor, make sure you subscribe, ask questions. Uh, we're gonna go through some questions today that were asked by, by Jewel and Prasanna and Dan. We're gonna go through some of those and provide a little bit of commentary. So with that, hey, let's get things going here. All right, so first, it is July 31st. So we're gonna take a look at well, a few things that happened and give you a little bit more perspective in adding one additional metric this month or this week versus what we've done you know, in prior weeks. So we're gonna look at month over month, but we're also gonna look at July 20th over July 21st, just to look at that market specifically to give you a little perspective. Now, remember, keep in mind, 2020 was a crazy little market and we set a lot of records. So this is gonna be super important as we're taking a look at what to expect and where things are gonna be going. Again, we're gonna look small at 60 days and then we're gonna look a little bit larger. All right, so month over month, inventory is up 28.9%. Uh, New homes coming on market, well, they're actually down 3%, not unexpected. Pended uh, month over month, following that same guys. Uh, and then of course, solds, you know, up, uh, you know, are, are down 4.5% uh, from June. Okay, not unexpected. But let's keep things in perspective. And this we'll call the perspective column. All right, so in July, we're only 18.9% less homes available, which is different even from last week. Remember last week we were closer to, well, what was it? I think it was like 20, 20%. See, keeping the ones from last week. Yeah, 25.7%. Okay, well that's a big deal because we're now down to 18.9% as far as a disparity in inventory. And remember, we talked about getting a, a more consistent crazy market to crazy market as this is gonna come from the, you know, the 48%, 52%, and it's gonna get down, and I think we will start to hedge closer to the single digits. It doesn't mean that our market is shifting. It doesn't mean that, oh my gosh, I missed it. No, it just means that we're comparing market to market, which is more real. The numbers are more accurate when we look at this. All right, so, Listings are down, overall homes available are down 18.9%. But note, uh, we're actually 9.7% above where we were at last year. And Penn did match that. So we're up 5.3% for the same month of July. And then of course we're up 10.2% for the same month of July on solds. Okay, well this perspective clearly shows that this July was better than last July. Okay, well, there's a few other things we're gonna go over that's gonna help to bring that into a little bit better clarity. How's that? Uh, year over year, 18.9%. Inventory is down year over year. Again, we're gonna start closing that gap. But note, year over year, new on market is up 14.9% and pended is up 15.7%. So we're seeing that matched as far as new homes coming on, greater homes going under contract. So appended means a buyer and a seller agree to terms, but they haven't closed yet. They still have contingencies. There's a financing contingency, maybe an inspection contingency, 
you know, maybe they have, uh, you know, a well or in septic or whatever it is, but they haven't closed yet. They haven't gotten final loan docs yet. So that is important because you can see that we are matching toe for toe. In fact, we come down here just in the last seven days, we had 1,654 homes coming on market. We had 2,097 go off. Plus we had 1,851 homes that closed, meaning that the buyer and seller agreed to terms. And then now we have a new owner. Okay. So this clearly is consistent with what we're seeing here. Cause look at this. We are already 25% over last year, year to date. We have sold 25% more homes in this market than our crazy market last year. Okay. So the question is, are we going to start to see a shift? Are we going to see, oh my gosh, this Armageddon of homes coming on the market? The answer is no, we're not going to see that. And in fact, the FHFA uh, actually extended the moratorium again uh, to allow people because our markets are better to go ahead and get their home sold. If they're not able to do a loan modification, if they're not able to, to, uh, you know, to uh, refinance or if really, you know, it's not a good idea to keep the home, uh, because their, their circumstances are not going to change enough to, to make up the difference to pay those arrears of interest due. Okay. It allows them that opportunity to get the home sold without bringing a glut of, you know, defaulting homes or foreclosures on, on market. It's a brilliant move, uh, costs very little, but allows people a lot more flexibility, which is awesome. All right, so when we come over here, maybe before I hit this corner up here, mortgage rates for the third week in a row have stayed the same. Well, ever since they dropped uh, 50 basis points or half a percent on refinance uh, uh, costs because of the perceived, hey, uh, it's gonna be a bad, COVID's going to create, you know, uh, mortgage mayhem uh, for a lot of the existing mortgages. That didn't happen, so they dropped it. <clears throat> and what we're noticing is a massive bump again because non-owner occupied. I mean, yes, okay, so owner occupied is awesome. We're below three uh, percent. The one, the the seven-year arm, yeah, the seven-year arm is still a great deal uh, with one point at two point one two five, which is <laughs> still a crazy rate. But we are below. 4% on non-owner occupied. That's a big deal. That is, that's hundreds of dollars every single month of realized income that an investor would have. Or, you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, folks looking at second homes. <clears throat> okay. So an investor, non-owner occupied, who's looking at this rate. Okay. If you, uh, so minimum is 20% down, you do 25% down you get a significant uh, interest rate and uh, uh, fees reduction uh, just for five extra percent. Remember, it's based on risk. And the best part is they reward people for putting that extra 5% down. Okay, something to consider. However, if you're looking at a second home, you can look at this kind of pricing and you only need 10% put down. So a lot of folks are going out and looking in these higher demand areas for the VRBO and putting 10% down or 20% down, getting this and then renting it out using the time that they want, but renting it out and using that as a tool to again, generate income and create assets and wealth, which is an awesome idea. Why? Because borrowing money right now is super cheap and it makes a lot of sense because you can make things pencil today that normally you couldn't make pencil. That's a big deal. So if you need to have more of a conversation on that, reach out, just send us a note, let us know. We're here to help, no strings attached, all right? Perfect. Now, let's talk about this. We talk about year over year. So average CDOM, that's combined days on market. <clears throat> Today, we have an average time on market of 12 days. In 2020, it was 29 days. So we've dropped that more than 50%, which is awesome, okay? Now, this is also going to tie into one of the other charts that Marie is going to also post for you. Average list to sale. Now, this is super important. It's super important because it's going to, uh, it's part of one of the questions that Dan was asking, and it's going to help us to uh, kind of navigate um, through his question to, to hopefully best answer it. All right. So when we talk about list to sale, meaning we have our list price, we have our sales price. 
And what is that percentage? So if I list a house for $100,000, I sell a house for $100,000, that means I have 100% list to sale average, okay? All right, if I list at $100,000 and I sell at $105,000, okay, well now I have a $105,000 or 105% average. And that's exactly what's happened here. Because as we look at this beautiful chart here that Marie will post for you, it, it shows you that list to sale price. So one of the questions like what Dan asked, Dan says, last week you mentioned there should never be an expired or canceled listing. Why are there these listings? Uh, I'm a future seller and curious about how to avoid becoming a statistic, as you put it. All right, Dan, to keep you from becoming a statistic, let's talk about statistics. All right, so first, in the chart, it's going to show uh, how many price reductions, which was 300. Is that the right one? I read the wrong one. Isn't that funny how I knew that? There we go. I knew it because I made it a Red Pen Massacre. All right. So we had 419 price reductions. We had 42 can, uh, expired and 102 that canceled their listing. What does that mean? Well, that means that the seller either was under the wrong impression of what their home was worth, uh, whether by an agent or they have what's called sentimental equity in their home where they say, oh, my home must be worth this because it is, it is mine and I've done these things to it and it is awesome and it's worth more. No, it's not. Sentimental equity has a zero value. And you know, I know that I've gotten a few comments that people find that kind of funny uh, and it is kind of funny uh, until it's you. And then you're like, really? All right. So yes, zero value. Okay. So here's the thing. And this is super important. If your home sells within the first seven days, you're going to see between a hundred and a hundred and seven hundred and five percent of list price. Perfect. However, if you miss that mark, you go out to 20 days, you're going to look at 98, 96% of original list price. So you can already see how time on market is going to affect dollars in your pocket. Okay. If you miss that mark, you go out to 40 days. Okay. You're going to look at 92, maybe 93% of original list price. Again, an even clearer indication that the more time on market, the less dollars come back into your pocket. Plus here's the thing. Overpricing, see buyers are super smart. So overpricing gains you nothing, okay? They're just gonna dismiss the home. Okay, they may not even go out to it, all right? And I actually have a chart saying, if you get a few showings and no offers, if you don't get any showings and no offers, if, if you get uh, showing schedule but nobody shows up, you know, and, it, and we actually have tracked this and it shows you the percentage of how much you are over market. And we've uh, been very accurate in, hey, if you, uh, you know, look, if you've got a bunch of uh, uh, showings and no offers, you're 3% overpriced. People drop their price 3%, bam, they will get multiple offers. <clears throat> we've shown statistically how that works for folks. Now, here's the thing. If you overprice and buyers do not come out and they do not present offers, you are losing dollars. That's all there is to it. So overpricing your home has zero benefit. If you're just throwing your home out there in the market to say, hey, if I get this price, yeah, I'll sell. Here's the takeaway. One, you've now wasted a whole gaggle of people's time, right? Because it's not serious, you're not real about it. The other thing is you've now in your mind already accepted the fact, hey, I'm gonna sell, but I know that I'm not really gonna sell. And so you kind of defeated the purpose of what you're trying to do. And you know this, and in the back of your mind, you know this. And what's really funny is in the back of your mind, you know that you have just set yourself up for failure because of you know, not following the, the guidance of correct pricing, preparing your home for sale. Hey, listen, there's a lot of ways to drive a car, okay? But there are definitely better ways to drive your car, to get there safer, more effectively, and to have you know, more gas in your gas tank, which means more dollars to you. Just saying. All right, so Jewel. Jewel says, 
how can pri home prices keep going up? Uh, there must be a bubble imminent in our market. Okay, tool. Yes, sorry, supply and demand. Okay, if we only have, <clears throat> if, we, if we have a very limited inventory, we have two weeks of inventory right now. That's it, half a month, two weeks. In other words, if I have a giant bucket here and all of the real estate agents put their listings in this bucket and we call it the Northwest MLS, okay? Once I put a lid on it, I should have four to six months of inventory to sell. We're at half a month of inventory. And we have been struggling with one week to half a month of inventory, 10 days of inventory for a long time, like uh, over a year now, okay? That is going to continue. We do not see any shift in inventory levels coming up significantly, pending what we're gonna talk about seasonality. So as we see this, we still have a massive pent up to uh, buyer demand, driven primarily because of interest rates, different options because people have FOMO, fear of missing out, uh, because it just makes great sense. So people start to escalate and they escalate against, you know, uh, you know, against somebody else, they keep bumping up. Now, is there a way to stop that? Sure. Sure there is. Is it real? <laughs> I don't think so. But you want to stop that. You have all of the buyers when, uh, <clears throat> when a home comes on market, have all the buyers pull back. Have all of them pull back and say, you know what, Mr. Seller? None of us are willing to play this escalation game. You, <laughs> you need to sell your home at a reasonable price. Okay, sure. Is that realistic? No, not gonna happen. Sorry, but uh, will, do we foresee this changing? Not for the next 12 months, probably not for the next 14 months as we, uh, you know, projecting out. Then we'll start to see a little bit of a, of a inventory increase at that point as interest rates start to creep up into the three and a half, <clears throat> excuse me, three and a half percent, maybe even bump up against in a year and a half, it's against the four percent, you know, depending on what's going on in the economy, inflation and all the other crazy stuff internationally, right? Okay. So just understand that that's what we're looking at. No, I do not see that changing. No, there is no bubble because we don't have enough inventory to have a bubble. We need, we need a lot more inventory to have a bubble. Really? really. Okay. All right. Uh, persona, where can we find more homes to look at? All right. There are off market homes. That's a great way to look at communicate with your agent and say, Hey, listen, I want to look at off market homes. There's a, a number of different ways to do it. Yes. You need to have a team to facilitate that effectively. Ask them about it. If they don't, reach out to us and we can have a different conversation. Simple enough. All right. <clears throat> uh, buyingoffmarket.com, www.buyingoffmarket.com. Take a look at that. There's some options and ideas there for you. <clears throat> okay. We talked about seasonality and then it's going to be the last thing we're going to recap this and button it up. So in uh, the uh, normal, right, our uh, February through Really, the end of uh, April is our, our spring market, it goes really super crazy. Uh, and then it starts to dip down a little bit as far as what we call the real estate ghost town about mid to late May till about you know uh, July 4th weekend. <clears throat> people are going on vacations. Uh, you have people that, you know, you have students getting out of school, uh, you know, family lives are changing and things like this. Real estate does not become top priority and activity slows down. The media even, pre you know, you know, talked about it. Some of the stats saying, oh my gosh, inventory's on the rise. Are we looking at a shift? Ha, huh, no. But it was not as significant as historically we've seen. Sure, we didn't see it in 2020 because we were in lockdown. <laughs> we were let out of the closet. Yeah, it was exciting. And so everybody laughed. Okay. But July's still been kicking it, right? As expected. Post July 4th, we've been kicking it. More inventory, more sales. Everything's been creeping upwards as expected, even over year over year. All right. Now we talked about the next 60 days. Look, uh, kids are going to be going into school and I am a, seriously expecting a slowdown, a notable one, because now this is the first time that technically kids are back in school. And I think parents are going to be a lot more sensitive. Plus, People are going to take those last minute summer vacations, although it's been <laughs> blazing hot. And today, today, finally, there's a little reprieve. I hope I don't regret this in December, but the cool, no sunshine out there right now is, is very, it's very relieving. Um, sorry, uh, but every once in a while you need a break from something good, right? 
Okay, all right, that's how we know it's coming. Now, about mid to late August, we're gonna see buyers pulling back uh, <clears throat> for the very reason of kids getting back in school, last minute vacations, and it's going to ride all the way through most of September, and then uh, you know, late September, October, we kick off again until about mid-December. I am expecting this to be more significant. I could be wrong, but I'm expecting to feel this more. Now, for buyers, that's a really good time to go out and actually take a look at it as other buyers are pulling back, not top of mind. Sure, the really hot things, so look at the really hot things, really hot things, but homes have been on market, maybe a seller overpriced it, sentimental equity, uh, you know, whatever it might be, they're not gonna be pursuing those, and so you may have a greater opportunity. Just saying, keep that in mind. So don't go on uh, vacation and not look at what's been on market longer than 10 or 15 days. Keep that in mind. All right, our market is continuing to march forward. Uh, interest rates stayed the same for the last three weeks. We expect that through the next week. Our market will continue to march at least for the next three weeks. And then I think we're gonna to start to see a little bit of pullback. It's gonna be short term. It's gonna be normal seasonal activity. Nothing new, normal seasonal activity. Expect it. If you're a seller, expect it. Plan for it. Hmm. In the meantime, you guys have an absolutely beautiful day. Uh, it's a little cooler. And uh, in the meantime, I will talk to you guys later and I will see you on the next video. Take care. Oh, remember to subscribe. Make sure you share it. It's free. And like Jewel and Dan and Prasanna, uh, you know, they ask some really good questions. Ask your questions. They're free. Hmm. All right. In the meantime, have a great day.